So you have a research paper you've been working on and you want to publish it. How do you know that this journal is good for you? How do you know that it has a good reputation in the scientific community in your field? And more importantly, how do you know that when you apply for jobs or specialty training, that this paper that you've published will be accepted in your resume and will increase your status and your chances of being accepted? In this video, we will be talking about such pitfalls in the publishing process that some people miss. So the story started when I was working on a research paper, uh, meningitis in Jordan. And we, I came across this, this paper and it was particularly uh, of poor quality. And I was really surprised. Why is this the case? How could this get published? Uh, so I dug deeper in it and I came across a few things. So this is the paper, Revision of Meningitis Surveillance System in Jordan during 2001 and 2000 and uh, 14 years. So anyways, so I started asking questions. Why is this paper so horrible? So I said, let's dig deeper, let's check the citations. So starting the investigation, this paper was cited four times. Uh, now, not to mention the, the technical errors in the paper itself, I'm not going to talk about that. By the way, this will be a topic for the um, research workshop one, uh, 100 or uh, 102 that uh, we'll be doing with the IFMSA and Dr. Muhammad Al-Qudah. We will be talking about this paper and its contents. Uh, but now it's not about the paper itself, but let's just quickly check the citations on Google Scholar. It was cited four times. So these are the papers. The last one is a citation um, that I couldn't access. So we have three citations. One from was from uh, Frontiers, one was from Springer, and the last one was um, from a third publisher. Let's start with the first one, viral meningitis and overview. The first paper, by the way, it was talking, like I said, about meningitis. You can see the paper for yourself. But now the paper that cited this horrible one, it had a table that talked about fever. And it said that fever was the most common clinical manifestation in Jordan. And this paper, let's call it al -Zain because that's the author. So al -Zain was cited. That's the number 19. Now, the problem is that fever was never mentioned in the al -Zain paper. No clinical manifestations, by the way, were mentioned at all in the al -Zain paper. So this was a false citation. Despite that, Zain did not report fever or any symptoms in his, in his paper. And yet it was cited as, you know, as evidence that fever was the most common symptom in Jordan. So that's one false citation. And that's really odd. Let's move on. The second paper which cited the Zain, it was from Frontiers, and it's fr from a really uh, reputable publisher and from legit uh, authors in Qatar. So, and it's, and I quote, it said that, on the other hand, only Jordan showed a low prevalence of enterovirus compared to countries of the uh, Middle East and North Africa, MENA region. And again, al Zain was cited. The problem is that al Zain never mentioned enterovirus in his paper at all. It did not report enteroviruses or any other type of viruses for that matter. And that's also quite odd. And that's an, uh, the second false citation. And we only have three that we could access. And the third one, and this is the most important, by the way, guys. So please hang around and, and you'll be really entertained today. And we'll learn many lessons from this. Now, coming back to the review, let's, because it's a review, it has many, many citations, more than 100. So let's take a closer look at its citations. I chose a random citation, a random paper which was cited in this review, and I opened it. And this is what I saw. Let's not dwell on it for too long. Let's move on to another random citation. Again, it's a very similar one. So let's go back. Let's move again. It's the first one was AIDS and clinical research. The second one is AIDS and clinical research, but it looks quite similar. Let's move on. Looks really similar, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's move on a fourth time. Again, I mean, what's happening here? If you just pay a little bit of attention, these are all papers by journals, different journals from the same publisher. And they have the same appearances. They have the same uh, interface. 
So that's why it feels really odd. Let's move on. So again and again, I chose a random citation, and this is what I, what I saw. Antivirus and antiretrovirus, for, again from the same publisher. Another paper from the same publisher. And this is why they look similar. And a third paper from the same publisher. So far, I think we've it's now seven papers, and they're all from the same publisher. At this point, it really felt like this. We are seeing the same thing again and again, just with different colors. And they are diff different journals from the same publisher. So it really looked like this at this point. You're just changing the beard and the hair, but it's the same person. Is this a coincidence? <laughs> no, it's not. What's happening here is that this review paper is from the same publisher. This review paper that we are talking about by Pramoda Erla is from the same publisher again. It's called Omics Publishing Group. But anyways, so what's happening here is that it's a review to cite many of their own papers. Why does this happen and why are they doing it? Probably, but not surely, probably to increase citation metrics. I mean, it's really odd to publish a review paper. The vast majority of the citations are from the same publisher. Usually, you just go browse randomly on PubMed, you find papers, you read them, and you cite them. But when you have such... Many people would consider this uh, suspicious. So this would be a very um, you know, important thing to consider, that if you cite yourself, if every year, let's say, you write, if you're a journal or a publisher, you write review papers to cite your own papers, it will lead to a false increase in the impact factor of your journal. And people will think that you're a big deal and it's, you're a, you know, it's a very good publisher or a, you have many good journals that are receiving many citations, but these citations are from your own uh, publishing group. It's like taking money from your right pocket and adding it to your left pocket. It doesn't really change anything. So the lessons. Number one, the best precaution is careful reading. You can always read about different uh, directories or indexing websites, but the first thing that tipped me off about this paper by Al Zain is simply paying attention to the contents which I did not address in this video because this video is not about the contents of that meningitis paper. But you should critically address its conclusions, its, its method methodology. And if you find errors or flaws in the methodology, then you should take it with a, a, a grain of salt. So that's the best precaution is careful and critical reading and critical thinking. Number two is to always take time to check the references of your papers that you are dealing with check if that statement really is it's being correctly cited. I've seen many, many researcher colleagues that say, we've been cited, but when I go to check that citation in that uh, paper that cited me, and I go and I see it, and it's talking about a different conclusion which I reached. It's saying something that I never said in my own paper. So this happens. So t take time to check the references and the referencing papers. Also, check journal indexing and directories. This is extremely important and extremely easy. And we'll be talking about them uh, very soon. So you have these four important lists or indexing websites, PubMed, Scopus, uh, DOAJ, or the, um, the directory of open access journals. I call it DOAJ for, uh, for short. And Beale's list uh, of predatory publishers. So why did I add all the... Uh, the prior three in blue, and the final one, Beale's List, in red. Because when you publish in a journal, in an open access journal, you want your paper to be in the first three directories, in PubMed, Scopus, and Dowage. You do not want your paper to be found in uh, Beale's List of predatory publishers. It's like a blacklist or a suspicious list of, of journals that are not trusted by many, many academics. Uh, which may harm your resume when you apply for jobs or specialty training or higher education. So, and the final point is to check uh, with your seniors and the community. If you uh, talk about a journal, none of your seniors know it, none of your colleagues know it, or many of your colleagues know it, but they tell you do not go for it because it has some question marks on it, then you are better off not applying your paper, your manuscript to that journal. So remember, 
Like we saw in the previous papers, even honest researchers from Frontiers, Springer, they have made citations, those people in Qatar, they have cited this paper as Zain, but it was a false citation, and I've checked out their backgrounds, and I know their papers are legitimate, but they had these errors. So research is not infallible. Even when people are being honest and hardworking, mistakes can happen. But science is always about thinking for yourself. Thank you for watching and hope this video helped you and goodbye.